do you know, in the UK, the last few months, there's been so much rain. Um, the weather has been not very nice. So I decided, rather than dwell on how unpleasant it was, to create a tile that celebrated the grey, the rain and the mist. So let's carry on and let's get tangling. Okay, so I have here a grey tile and uh, this is made from Legion Stonehenge paper. I have a Black Micron 02, a Black Micron 05, a white jelly roll, doesn't really matter what size, a 10 or a 08. Let's pop those to the side. I have a pencil, a tortillon, a white chalk pencil and a corresponding tortillon. Okay, so let's move those to the side. I'm just going to grab my 05, oops, my 05 pen. And we're not going to do a string, we're not going to do dots and a border, we're going to straight in to, I might as well do it this side and tie, turn my tile around. This is one of my own cut tiles. We're going to do the tangle rain. And that is by Zentangle Headquarters. So it's rain on a grey tile. Let's turn this. You can see this is one that I've cut myself. Okay, so how are we going to start this? I'm going to start this by drawing a wavy line all the way up across my tile, like so. I am now going to do a zigzag that is uneven but it goes up all along this zigzag line. There you go. Okay, that's simple enough isn't it? So the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to ink in all these little triangular spaces. So I'm going to start, I'll do that little bit there because that probably would have been one there. So I'm still sticking with my 05 pen. So it's a simple start. And with a 05, the nib is a little bit fatter. The ink comes out nice and smoothly. Whenever you're doing your inking in, just relax into it. Enjoy that process of making this as inky as you can, whatever colour you're using. Um, some people ask me, how do you do your inking in without spaces? You just keep going backwards and forwards over it and actually taking your time. So I'm not going to speed this up. I think it's, it's valuable to know pace at which tanglers go, and to know there is no rush, no speed, because Zentangle is about enjoying this moment, just allowing ourselves some quiet time to create. If you need to turn your tile, and do so. If you want to make it easy on yourself so that your hand is in a comfortable position, that you can comfortably add your ink or draw your tangle. Remember just softly breathe. That probably sounds funny, but I know plenty of people who, when they're focusing, when they're concentrating, can hold their breath and then take a huge big breath when they remember they've got to breathe. So just relax into it. I actually really enjoy inking in spaces. It's 
a simple, a simple pleasure. The boldness that appears. And you can glance back at the spaces that you've already inked. And if you see a little bit of a white space, just pop your pen back on it. Obviously, if you're using a finer pen, it might take you a little bit longer. And that's absolutely okay. You don't need to rush. If you need to pause the video, you can do so and you can start it again when you're ready to start it again. And take a moment sometimes when you're doing something like this, you can just be aware of where you are in your room, in the space in which you're tangling. Maybe just be consciously aware of the warmth of the atmosphere, maybe the sounds around you. Let them enter, acknowledge them, and let them flow past. Now I'm coming down to my last little section down here. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky right on the edge. So I always have something underneath my tile. This is a piece of um, craft paper that I've simply actually stuck to my desk and I can remove it if it gets grubby and put another piece down. So that already looks pretty funky, doesn't it? So what we're going to do now is we are going to aura around all of these and aura is simply drawing a line. So I'm still using my 05 and you can see I'm going to draw a line carefully around the outside of these zigzags. Really just try and keep the spacing is sort of pretty even. You're not going out too far and you're not coming in too close. Sometimes when you get to the points, you actually have to go a little bit further than you think you do so that you can get that nice even point distance. So that's one side. Turn your tile. And you're going to do the other side. Really, really simple. And taking moment just to enjoy this continual line okay. and now maybe we can do another line this is I'm going to step away a little bit from the um, the original of rain, but I'm going to add in another aura, just because I can. Okay. So you can always make your tangle. You're tangling what you want to make it. Same on the other side. So I've done it roughly the same distance as the first aura, same spacing. I'm taking this 
moment to enjoy the pen. Okay, so that is where I'm going to leave rain at the moment. And I'm actually going to change my pen. And I'm going to go for a zero two. So we've done rain. So now I'll turn this over. We've got the grey tile, we've got the rain, and now it's going to be a little bit misty. You can see I've got the finer pen. And so we're going to do mist, and that is also by Zentangle headquarters. And where am I going to do mist? It doesn't matter which way round you have your tile. And actually, I'm going to do mine this way. And mist is a lovely soft tangle. It's very organic. So I'm going to start here. And you start with a really wiggly line and a few dots. A wiggly line and a few dots. And that is all you have to do. They're uneven. And sometimes it's it's a little easier if you go a little faster. So you can make some long ones and some short ones. I'm going to pop a little one in here. And then I'm going to do another one here. I'm going to start this one here. So you've got the mist falling away from the rain. You want to alternate so that you've got some short, some long. I'm going to do some of these as if they're disappearing behind the rain that I've got there. It's actually, I just realised it's easier to start from your point and work backwards. It's not normally how I do it. I can tangle in the direction that I'm going. So you do this in whatever way you find easiest for you. Squiggly little lines, easy to do. Not as formal as that zigzag of rain. So even though the weather has been grey, rainy and not very nice for quite a while, we have odd days when it's a bit brighter, like I had yesterday, and then you wake up and it's rainy again. Hey ho, I live in Wales where the hills are green and they wouldn't be green if we didn't have plenty of rain, so we have to be grateful, don't we? And gratitude being that first step in Zentangle really important to remember it. Okay, can you see how you're ending up with this sort of really soft pattern falling away from your zigzaggy rain? Simple tangles are a joy to do and we can forget that sometimes so Allow yourself to maybe create some simple tangles, mono tangles, that's just one tangle. This is a duo tangle, this is two tangles on a tile. Without being complicated, you can see I haven't made my tangling too small. And you can do this a relatively short period of time and that allows you oh, that's my sorry there's something just fell on my desk I'm hoping you can't hear that um, as I was saying allow your mind just to focus on the line that you're drawing right now And be aware of how that allows your mind, your body to relax, to put aside at this time any stresses, any worries, any concerns. And 
and being in this mindful state. Okay, Ooh, I'm just going to do a couple down here. I forgot that little bit down there. I'm just going to do those off there. Do some long sort of lines off there because they would be longer. Okay, so there we have the mist falling away from the rain. Popping my lid on my pen. I am just going to get my white, I'll get a lid off, white jelly roll. Now with a white jelly roll, it always helps to get it flowing first of all. And by that I mean just get the ink flowing. You don't need any pressure on the end of your pen. If you haven't got a white pen, don't worry. You can still do this, just miss out this spot. This spot. I'm just going to do a couple of little white ones that are going to go in between. Not very many. As I said, if you haven't got a white pen, that's absolutely fine. You don't need to. It's not a necessity. This was just an added extra. And it just adds a little bit of contrast to your white. And you hardly have to touch your pen onto the paper surface. Jelly rolls are a, a different nib construction to microns. So if you're using one and you're finding that the ink isn't coming out, I suggest you put less pressure onto the nib, onto the pen, and simply allow the ink to draw. I'm going to do a couple more there and a couple more here. Very small, just a few, I'm adding a few dots underneath as well. Nothing major. I mean, sometimes when I'm recording, I just get a sudden idea and I add it in. So I've added a few little dots, which you let me just zoom in a little bit for you. So you can maybe let me just come up to here. And you can see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to come zooming out again, just so you've got, you can see what I'm doing. Let's pop the lid on the pen. And we're going to add some shade. And the shade I'm going to do, very, very simple. I'm going to add quite a dark bit just underneath. So I'm doing along the side and underneath that zigzag, along the side and underneath, along the side and underneath. This will give it a little bit um, of a 3D image, shading adds depth to your tan clip. I'm not going to get my tortium and just soften it. I'm going to keep that underneath there. Just soften it a little bit. Little rotations of your tortillon. Not with the point, just with the side of your tortillon. Okay, so that's that first little bit done there. I'm going to do the same on this side, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it all the way around. Um, you can see, with adding shade, you're not using the point of your pencil, you're using the side so that you don't compress the paper fibres because then blending becomes a little bit more challenging. You can see, to make it easier, I'm just twizzling, turning my tile. Each moment just to make it easier to add that graphite. So I've added that graphite there. Tortillon again, I'm going to fix it in place first of all. So that just means doing very close little rotations. Fix it in place and that 
means that it's going to be nice and smooth and dark really close to that line and then once we've done that we can go back and we can blend it out so that it becomes less of a harsh line if I leave it like this it's a very harsh line so I'm now going to go back and on that outer edge using a light stroke I'm going to just pull the graphite out a little bit and take your time doing this what you're aiming for is that you won't be able to see really where it goes so it goes dark to light to barely there it's not a rush like with all Zentangle So you can start seeing the difference between this space and this space here. Taking a moment. You don't need a lot of pressure. So again, it's that repetition. As you do this, you may notice that you're lifting little bits of graphite and little bits of paper fibre. That's absolutely fine, that's sort of normal. I've got some here, so blow them away, out of the way. Just gently blending and spreading that graphite. You don't have to rush this in any way. It's a really key part of your, your tangling and in your shade. I'm just going to go back in here, blend it out. Now, if you if you've got a wide open space like we have here, what you can do is go in with your finger and just blend it a little bit more without sending it into the areas you haven't got graphite. Just be aware it might be on the end of your finger. Okay, so we've done those. I'm now going to get my white chalk. And I am going to add white chalk just in the points of these little zigzags, just in the points of that outer aura. Do you know, I've done this a few times and it always ends up looking different because I end up doing the shading or the highlighting slightly differently. And I'd encourage you to play with it and say, well, okay, how am I going to do this? How is it? Maybe today I'll do it a little bit differently. Because the way you shade and the way you highlight can alter what your tangles look like. Just in these points. So I've got a really nice pointy, sharp point on the end of my white here and I'm going to get my white tortium, don't pick up the wrong one and I'm just going to blend that very lightly so again if you haven't got a, a, a um, white chalk don't worry why don't you try with a little bit of graphite see what it looks like just in those points so you may find that as you're doing this you can see that it's it's smudging over your lines. Don't worry, we will do something with that. Okay, I'm going to do some more. I'm actually going to do it on these ones as well. So I'm going to go into the points, making it really white into the bases of that outer aura. Oh, yes, the outer aura. In there. As I said, don't worry if it's going out over some of your lines at the moment. You see, I'm trying not to make a, a big white mess on the lines. I'm trying to keep my chalk within that aura. back with my torsion. You don't need as much um, playing with the white chalk as maybe you did with the graphite. Just a little bit, just so that it fixes into the paper surface and you soften 
Again, you soften the white chalk lines. You don't have to fill the line completely. It's just in the points. Blow away those little bits. I am going to go back now to my 05. And we're going to just do a little bit of tidying up of those lines. So I'm going to start at the top here. And just where I've got a little bit of white chalk. I'm going to restate those lines. It's absolutely okay to restate a line to make it bolder because sometimes the graphite also makes it paler. So taking your time to restate, you can see gives it that strength of line again. Just go back there. Sometimes you really have to focus to add, to restate. This is quite simple because we're just following this line. And you'll see that as you restate this line, the white chalk that you put down stands out even more because the black of the pen is nice and bold. Oops, had a little wiggle there, never mind. Okay, so we're now going to do the same on this side. Enjoying seeing this coming together. It's adding the little bit of Zentangle love to, you don't always have to restate lines, but there are some times where it just makes sense. And you end up with an image that's bold, that's clear. I'm aware that to do some of these lines, sometimes I end up holding my breath. So I also have to remind myself, Joanna, take a breath. If you need to, stop between each line. Okay. okay, so the final thing we need to do is to add our chop to our tangling. And that's your initials, or you might have a chop. I've got a Z and a J-O for Zenjo. So that identifies your tangling. And on the back, you maybe want to write the date and sign it. This is March. 2024, and I can't remember the day that it is today, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm going to turn this over. That's the way round. I like it. So I'm going to pop it there, pop my pen down, and take a moment to appreciate what you have created in this celebration of the grey, the rain, and the mist. <laughs>